Oh, for a little ride, eh? Yeah, a little warm today. I bet. It's a beautiful day, though. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah. Hey, you want me to take your helmet? Uh, sure. Yeah. Thanks. No problem. So what's up? Well, I put about a thousand kilometers on it now. Yeah? You like it? Yeah, it's been good. Yeah, yeah it's fun. Uh, I'm just wondering, maybe you could uh, take a look at it and maybe do an oil change on it and... Sure. Check her all out, loop yeah. the chain and all that jazz for me and all that and uh, see what we can do. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. So okay. today, I guess, we'll get Carl's bike in here. We'll maybe do a bit of a service on it, check it over, get it back so he can get out, out riding some more today on Dino's Tinker Shed. So let's start with the air filter and there's a reason why I want to do that. Unlike your car that has a disposable paper style filter, the DR actually uses a washable and reusable foam filter. So we're going to pull that out and wash it in some soapy water and then let it dry. And I'm hoping that by the time we get the rest of the service done on the bike, the foam filter will be dry enough that we can recoat it in air filter oil and then reinstall it. So let's get to work. The air filter box lives underneath this side access panel and it couldn't be easier to get it off. It has a single Phillips head bolt and I like to put those into a, a magnetic parts tray and then we actually get access to the air box itself right here. So as you can see the air box itself has four Phillips head bolts that hold this cover on. So we're going to pull those off right now. Now the challenge with these is they have a captured nut that lives inside the molded plastic air box itself. And if you're a little bit too aggressive while you tighten these up, you'll deform that molded plastic and then you'll end up losing the captured nut on the inside. And we'll be able to see this in a second once I get these all off of here. These are the captured nuts. You can see that they just basically fit into a little slot here. And if you over tighten them, you'll actually enlarge that uh, plastic area and the nuts will start falling out. And it literally will drive you nuts. Now, inside the air box, you can actually now see the foam filter. And right over here is the one last Phillips head screw that retains that filter in place. So I'm going to try to get that out of there without blocking the camera too, too much. So this little plastic retainer clip holds the filter in place. Put that in the parts tray. And then this guy lifts right out. Let's get him over to the bench. We'll get a better look at him. So here is uh, the inside of your air filter. You can see it's uh, a foam air filter and it's two pieces. So there's an internal cage and then there is this external foam filter. And this is the part that we're going to wash. So let's, let's do that right now. And here we just have a bucket of plain soapy water and I'm going to actually put this in there and I'm just going to gently massage it. I'm not going to get crazy. I'm not going to wring this. I'm just going to work away at it to try and get the old oil out. And you can kind of see as it, as it goes through, it's pulling out any dirt. This, this filter is really not too bad at all. It probably didn't even need cleaning. Like I say, this bike is in just great, great, great shape. Now, I'm going to squeeze it. I'm not going to wring it, but I am going to squeeze it just to sort of get the majority of the oil out. And I can still feel a little bit of it on the foam, which is not bad. I think we've pretty much washed any dirt out of it. I'm going to give it another squeeze here just to see how this works. And see that? That's the old oil that's starting to come out of the filter. 
It's not bad at all. Okay, one more squeeze here. Again, we're not wringing it like a washcloth. We're just squeezing it. And I think it's starting to look pretty good. So it's just gentle massaging. So I'll finish this up and then we'll see about oiling it, or actually drying it first, and then we'll oil it. So I'm gonna give it one final good squeeze here, and now we're gonna let this dry. Okay, now that we have the air cleaner out, cleaned and drying, let's drop the oil so it has a chance to actually flow out of the bike, and then we'll get the oil filter itself out. Now, I let the bike warm up for about 10 minutes just to make sure that the oil is as liquid as possible, so it should drain out pretty easily. You're going to need a 17 millimeter socket for this. Okay, as I pointed out before, Carl's bike is lucky enough to have a really good skid plate on it. And right under here, ooh, where are we here? Right here is where the drain bolt is. So I'm gonna stick a 17 millimeter socket in there and take that bolt out. Now, I'm not sure how tight it's gonna be, but we are gonna find out here in a second. The DR650's oil filter lives underneath this cover and it actually says oil filter right there so it's pretty easy to pick out. And it's held in place by three 8mm cap head bolts. So usually you can get these off just with a, with a nut driver and I'm going to try that right now. Oh there we go. Because it's actually sealed with an o-ring so you don't want to over tighten these anyway. Now as soon as you take the cover off it's going to pee out a little bit of oil here. There you go. So I'm just going to loosen these off a little bit. And this will hold the cap in. And I'm going to tip the bike towards me a little bit just to let that let last little bit of oil out. And all of these cap head bolts are the same length, so you don't have to worry about getting them mixed up in, in terms of their length. And then I am just going to lift that down and you're going to see there's a nice little oil ring there, O-ring that seals the oil. And then there is also a spring that holds your oil filter against the case of the engine. So you don't want to lose that little spring right there. Um, we're going to clean this up on the bench. So I'm just going to set it down here for now. And then we're going to pull out the oil filter itself. So it's just held in there on a little stub shaft and they sell, they actually sell a little screwdriver with a threaded screw on it to get it out but I've never personally had any real problem with getting these out of here. So we're just gonna go like this and if you notice on the back of the oil filter there's that little o-ring we talked about. So I'm gonna save that because the new one didn't come with it. And my oil pan has a nice little spot I can set that on to drain. I'm going to take a clean rag and you're just going to mop out any remaining oil that's inside the oil filter housing itself. It's always a good idea to do that. And what I'll do is come back with a little bit of brake clean and clean this surface up. And I always like to check to see if there's any kind of shinies on the filter itself. So any kind of aluminum that might indicate any kind of wear or anything on there and this one this one looks really really good okay so let's let's clean up the cover on the bench I think that's a good spot to start so 
So here are these parts again. We've got our spring, we've got our oil filter oil ring, and we have our cover over o-ring here, which I'm going to pull out just to clean it. And I might need just a small little pick here to do that. And be really careful not to damage this thing. And it's so frail that um, you just, just want to take your time. Like that, see? Don't pull on it, don't rip it, don't do anything like that. Just take your time. And I'm just going to hose this down a little bit with some brake cleaner. And I'll wipe it off here just to get rid of any of the old oil. I'm just weird this way. If you haven't noticed, I like brake cleaner. There we go. Okay, so that's good. And this guy will give a little bit of a wipe. He goes there. And then I do like, I don't tend to spray the brake cleaner on the O-rings. I just run them through here and clean all the old oil off like that. Place them back in. And I'll do the same on here. Like that. The DR takes a 10W40 uh, weight motor oil. And here we have Motul 7100 full synthetic. Now I'll let you debate uh, whether you want full synthetic or half synthetic or non-synthetic. I don't really care. I believe full synthetic is the best oil you can buy. The important thing that you want is you want to make sure that it is a four-stroke motorcycle oil and not an automotive oil. And I've made this mistake myself. I've purchased Valvoline and Pennzoil in the past and they really were not um, rated for motorcycle usage. Remember your clutch and your transmission all share the same oil as the engine on most Japanese motorcycles. The detergents and friction modifiers that are in automotive oil sometimes don't really fit well with the clutch and the gear train on a on a modern motorcycle. So whether it's full synthetic or non-synthetic just make sure it's an actual motorcycle oil. And we're going to use a high flow filter today. The DR uses an HF137 filter. And um, I'll just show you what it looks like here while we got it up on the bench. So this is a disposable filter. They do make, they do make actual replaceable, reusable filters. This one here you can see it's just a paper element. And some, some will actually come with a replacement O-ring that fits on this side. This one doesn't. So we'll reuse the, the um, O-ring if it's in good shape. If not, I have boxes of O-rings here. I can just replace one. But that's kind of what we're looking for here. So again, good quality oil, MA or MA2 rated, which means it's an actual motorcycle oil. And uh, yeah, away we go. Let's put these back in. So first I'm gonna start with this little O-ring, which fits up onto that little shaft right there. We go and then the oil filter. Pretty simple, right? Now I've already gone through and wiped this off, so now what I want to do is line this up so it says Suzuki the right way and then sort of lift the oil filter up with the cap and gently put these cap screws back in. And I'm just finger tightening these in. So what, what you want to do, anytime you have a cover like this, or you have, say, two case halves coming together, or your cylinder head, as simple as the oil filter cover is, you want to tighten these in a cross pattern. And I mean, it's pretty easy with three bolts. You just kind of go across like this. And you slowly sneak up on the torque rating. Now I'll put the torque rating somewhere up in here so you can see what it is. It's not very much on these little eight millimeter bolts. But what's most important is that you tighten them down a little bit at a time. So I'm gonna tighten that down till I feel it bottom out on the cover, right there. And this means that the cover itself is gonna be coming into contact flat. You're not gonna crack the, the cover or a cylinder head or a case half if you continually um, cross tighten all your bolts and fasteners. Okay, I have the drain plug in 
and it's torqued down to 18 foot-pounds or I think it's 24 newton meters of torque and now we're going to add about 2.1 uh, 2 to 2.3 liters of oil and you may, I don't know if you can see this or not, but Motul's uh, 7100 oil is red. It looks like automatic transmission fluid, so don't get concerned if you, if you see that going in there. So I'm going to put this in, I'm going to put the first liter in, and then I'm going to check to make sure that that drain plug is actually sealing. Um, sometimes you have to give them a little bit more of a snug if they do start to drip. Um, they don't seat well. This one does seem to be doing okay though. Okay, so now we're back to the air box again. And I want to take a bit of a swipe inside here and see exactly if there's any gasoline, any contaminants in it, any kind of really dirty looking material. Now I'm expecting there to be a small amount of air box or air filter oil in the bottom. Normally when you clean these and you re-oil them, some of that oil drips off. So I'm going to use a Q-tip here and I'm just going to run it down in the, crev uh, the crevice down there and see. And sure enough, there is some nice clean air box oil on this Q-tip. So I'm not worried about it. I'm just going to take a quick sniff and it does not smell like gas. It's just straight oil, which is great. So we're going to clean all this out and I'm going to show you how to do that and then we'll move on to washing the filter itself. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to pull off this little plastic cover here. And what that does is let me see if I can do this. Uh, it's a little tricky here. What this basically does is it's a drain. So you're going to see all the oil come out right now. I'll throw a rag underneath that. Um, but anything that we use to clean inside there, and for me it'll be brake cleaner, will drain out now of the air box and it won't stay in there. I put a little rag down underneath the drain and I'm just I'm not going to squirt this into the carburetor. I'm just squirting it down into the bottom here just to clean out any contaminants that might be lingering inside the air box. And when you're done cleaning this out, you really should make sure that there's no lint left from your rag or paper towel that could get sucked up into the air box. Now the filter's still going to stop it, but it's just good practice. So our air filter is nice and dry. And now what we have to do is we have to coat it with some type of air filter oil. And today we're going to use a spray-on type air filter oil. And the reason you do this is the oil actually bonds to any dirt or debris. It almost acts like a bit of a pre-filter before it hits the foam itself. So if you don't do this, you're more than likely going to get contaminants coming across the foam and into your uh, carburetor. We don't want that. So the way this works, at least this product, is you agitate the can, you spray both the inside and outside of the filter, and then you massage the filter so that the oil disperses evenly through the foam media. And for that, I'm definitely going to wear gloves. That looks good. Okay, so now it's really just about reassembly. So remember our cage fits inside of the filter like this. And I like to make sure that it fits right inside. So the foam itself is sealing against the air box. Then this will go in and our little registration pin that holds it goes right like that. So let's put that back in the bike. Okay. So the installation is simply the reverse. So the filter does say which end is up. It goes like this. And that fits down in there. And then the retaining clip 
fits inside the little hole in the filter. This is really, I can't tell you how difficult this is to do um, backwards like this. Why won't that go in there? Let's see. There, there we go. Okay, sorry for all the, the heads in that. So you can, hopefully you can see that. The pin holds the cage tight, presses the filter in, and now all we have to do is insert our screw, which is gonna be easier than said than done. A little bit, I'm apologizing right now, but there we go. Okay, that's better. And you just snug this in here. Boop. When you're tinkering, you can never tell how hard something's going to be to uh, to get back in. And now we're just going to reinstall the cover. And again, these you can you just you must try not to over tighten these, or you'll just be into trouble. Oh man, the screwdrivers are greasy, greasy, greasy as they come. To load test Carl's battery. I tested it for voltage and the charging system when he first got it, but I'd really like to see how the load test works. See how much cold cranking amps are available to him in an emergency like a cold start or way out in the boondocks. So in order to do that, we have to take this additional cover plate off. We've had the seat off before. I think everybody knows how to do it. We take the cover plates, two 12 mil bolts, and off the seat comes. So let's get that done. We did test the battery for voltage, but today we're going to test it for its cold cranking amps capacity to see the condition of the battery. So I've got to pull out this retainer bar here that covers things up. And that's done with a 10 millimeter socket. So we are just going to take this little retainer bar off. I have more of these magnetic parts trays than you can possibly imagine. I've probably got 10 of them. If I'm doing an actual project, I, my son-in-law and I did a, a Spitfire project, a Kawasaki, uh, or sorry, yeah, uh, yeah uh, sorry, a John Deere Spitfire, um, Kawasaki, I'm thinking intruders. Um, we did a John Deere Spitfire 340 project uh, last winter, which I didn't film, I apologize, but um, when you break a project like that all the way down, I find Ziploc bags and magic markers work better than parts trays, but for day-to-day -day stuff like this, this works pretty good. So remember, this battery's live. It has a certain amount of cranking amps. We have our, our hot lead and our, and our negative over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in um, my load tester, and you can have a look and see how that works. This is what I use to test uh, my cold cranking amps on the battery. And the way this works is it's actually powered off the battery itself. So it's a little bit tight. You can either do this in the bike or you can take the battery out. I can just clamp it on there on the positive side. And let me just go like this. And we're gonna crack, clamp it right onto, if I can figure out this Medusa's head of cables here, right onto that. Now, what you're gonna see right away is the battery load tester powers up, which is great. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit the M, I believe it is. And the first thing that we can do is a overall battery test. So you can do a cranking test, a charging test. It, it does a few other diagnostic tests, but we're, I'm really interested in the battery test. So let's hit that, we'll hit enter. And this is a regular, no it's not, it is a flat plate glass mat battery, I believe. Cold cranking amp. So now I know that this has, we're going to select cold cranking amps 
and this battery is rated for 120 cold cranking amps. So I enter that into the system and I go enter and now it will test it. There we go. Don't ask me how it does here, but it load tests the battery. So this has 177 cold cranking amps available to it. So it has a 100% charge and 100% um, health. So this battery is, is in absolutely tremendous shape. And um, this just verifies for me that Carl has nothing to worry about with this. So we'll button this back up and um, get on to the next thing. Okay, good. These two 10 millimeter bolts are what hold on your chain guard here. And we're gonna pull this off just to make it a little easier for you to see and a little bit easier for us to work. Now, again, these aren't on here extremely tight and you're gonna see they've got a fairly large fender washer that's attached to them. These are a special bolt that you don't wanna lose. Now for me, I'm just going to take these off. I'm going to set them right down on the kickstand or kick uh, chain guard itself, and this allows us to take a look at the chain. As you can kind of see, this chain is pretty clean already. There's not a lot of contaminants on it. It's not rusty. Um, it looks like it's been well maintained. Okay, so. I'm going to take a little rag and just stuff it down there and I'm going to spray on a little bit of this degreaser here and I'll let that work for a few seconds and then I'll use a nylon bristle brush. You can buy these uh, at bike shops for like $15 or something. I just go to the local dollar store and buy them for a dollar and yeah maybe they're not as good but I've had this one for a couple of years. It works fine and, and it's really inexpensive. So don't get your fingers caught in the chain here. Be cautious of this. You get it caught in the, the sprocket in the chain, you'll take your finger off. But what you're trying to do is massage the material out. Don't use anything like brass or certainly not stainless steel or just a regular wire brush to do this. You're really just trying to massage that um, dirt off of the chain and then you can see it cleans it up pretty well. The best way to do this honestly is to take the chain right off and soak it in kerosene believe it or not and that would take all the contaminants off. You could do a really good job and uh, and then you can scrub it and put it all back together. You can take all, you can get right on the sprockets, all that kind of stuff. Today we're just doing a little bit of a faster job here. Uh, I just want to get this sort of cleaned up, oiled, and um, back to Carl so we can ride. I mean, he's got a brand new bike here. He wants to get out there and work away and get some fun on it. So that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to carry on cleaning this. And then we'll come back and we'll do a little bit of measuring and uh, see how what kind of condition the chain's in. Now I've got the chain clean. What I want to do now is I want to see if the chain is stretched, if it's if it's damaged anyway. So the way we do that is we take 21 pins. So I've marked this pin here with a black dot and I've counted over all the way to this black dot. And this is 21 link pins and the distance between these pins should not exceed 12.6 inches or 319 millimeters. So I'm gonna hold this at the pin length here and have a look and it is getting close but it is still only 317 millimeters. 
So this chain is still within spec. Um, now what I need to do is test the the chain uh, deflection here. So I'm going to set the camera up in a little bit of a different position for this to show you how this works. In order to check your chain free play here, you need to have the bike on the center stand so that there's weight into the suspension. And the way you check this is you determine the midpoint between the rear sprocket and the front sprocket, which is about and this bike about 13 inches from the rear sprocket. Right about here, just underneath the decal, is the midpoint between those two. So what you're gonna do is you, you wanted to use the bottom part of the chain and actually see how far of a deflection you get when the chain actually moves up and down. So how I'm gonna do that is without getting in your way here, is I'm actually going to lift this up and lock it as my baseline and now I can lower the chain and see how far that comes down. So that comes down from the top to the bottom 30 millimeters. So you can have between 30 and 45 millimeters of free play on the chain and still be within spec. Now the question is, what type of chain loop should you put on your fresh clean chain? And the choices are, are endless out there and sometimes a little bit overwhelming. Now, you can use something as simple as ADW90 gear weight oil that I have right here. It's the same stuff that you use in the rear end of your pickup truck and it works really, really well. For me, I find it's a little bit too sloppy. It doesn't cling on the chain as well as I would like and it tends to attract a lot of dirt. I, I live in an area where there's a lot of sand. Um, and that sort of leads me up the way to dedicated chain loops. Things like this Philwood Tenacious Oil, it's really high and tacky and sticks on the chain. But for convenience, I tend to use a spray and I use this Motul over here. It goes on with an aerosol, it has a high tack rate, and it's very, very clean. Now, I'm not saying it's better than gear oil, I'm just saying for me, it's more convenient and it's what I choose to use. So let's put a little bit of it on the chain now and see how it works. Another method for lifting the bike up to lube it, is if you have a friend, is you can put it on the kickstand and you can actually lift it up like this, which gives you some ability to turn the, the rear tire. It still takes two people, but it's definitely a, a method that you can lube the chain. And last, but not least, is replacing the chain guard. And don't over tighten these. They don't need to be super, super tight. They just need to be snug so they don't vibrate out. And that's it. That chain looks great. Well, that about wraps up our work for today. I think Carl's gonna be happy. The bike looks really good. So in summary, we uh, changed the oil and filter. We cleaned the air filter and re-oiled it. And we cleaned and oiled the chain. And we also checked it for measurements to make sure it was still in spec. The bike's ready to go. I think he's going to be quite happy with it. So let's get back and pass the bike back to him. See you in a few minutes. Oh my gosh, it's hot in the shed today. But I got your bike done. Great. Already? Yes, already. I got your oil done. I changed your oil filter, cleaned and, and oiled your air filter. I did your your chain, adjusted it all. It's it's done. It's it's done. Okay. Should be good for another couple thousand kids. That's fantastic. Maybe we should go for a ride. Yeah, but, that's a good idea. But first, maybe you should have a shower. You smell like bad gas. Oh man, I got bad gas. Great. All right. Well, I'll go take a shower, and then we'll head out for a nice ride today. So, I'm Dino. Carl. You enjoy your day. 
we'll see you again on Dino's Tinker Shed. All right, I'll go take that shower now. Oh my gosh. I get busted all the time.